All right, there's one thing I've been avoiding all this time. I've made all my examples where we're actually making these unsymmetrical rectangles have just a single x squared in front. But what if there's a number in front of the x squared, like 2x squared? Could I write 2x squared plus 5x plus 2 as some sort of unsymmetrical rectangle? Now, I didn't bother writing equal 0, area 0. I just want to know what rectangle that is, if I can do it. So people call that factoring. Can I factorize 2x squared plus 5x plus 2 is what they say in Britain. In the US, they'll just say, can you factor 2x squared plus 5x plus 2? It's just words, just words. All right, so here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to draw an unsymmetrical rectangle for this one. And yes, there's a 2x squared piece, which is going to be kind of curious. Now, what can I do here? It's going to have to be unsymmetrical. Now, I could do root 2x and root 2x. Sure, I could factorize it that way, maybe, but it doesn't seem friendly. So a more logical first guess would be do something like, I don't know, 2x and x. I mean, it could be something more complicated than that, but that just seems like the simplest first guess to try. So we're just guessing. This factorized work is guessing. Intelligent guessing. All right, uh, so I'll have the 2x squared piece. I also need an area of 2. All right, but I don't know what the side number should be. So let's, let's draw some in. I'll call them P and Q. So this area would be P times X, PX. This area would be, or watch out, 2X times Q, 2QX. So I've got a 2X squared piece. Yes. I've got these things, uh, PX and 2QX. And they should be adding up to 5X. PX and 2QX makes 5X. And I've got this 2. I've got this 2. So there's all the pieces. So what do I need P and Q to do for me? Well, I need P times Q to be 2. So I would get two factors of 2 whose sum is P plus all. Oh, the sum of P plus 2Q makes 5. P plus 2Q makes 5. Ooh. Now I've got to stare at that. Can I think of two factors of 2 that have the property that P plus twice the second factor equals 5? And I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, and I luck out because my brain has thought of an example. My brain has thought of choose P equals 1 and Q equals 2. 1 times 2 is 2 and 1 plus twice 2 is 5. Lucky. Lucky. See, this requires luck. And, you know, we lucked out that it was actually nice numbers too. The numbers don't always turn out to be nice, if it works at all. Anyhow, we've got P is 1 and Q is 2. So I'll do 1 there and I'll do 2 there. Uh, 1 times 2 is 2. Yes x and 4x makes 5x. It works. It works. So that means I can indeed factorize this expression. I can see it's this rectangle, 2x plus 1. Bring my right. I'll write it in purple underneath. This is 2x plus 1 times x plus 2. x plus 2. It worked out. There's my final answer. Wow. So even if there's numbers in front of the x squared, you can use your logic and educated good guesses to maybe work your way through it. And usually most problems on exams and textbooks and so forth are designed to work out because they want you to make all the good guesses. So they want you to practice doing intelligent guessing. So have fun intelligent guessing. Let me give you an example for you to try. Okay, let's do another factoring problem together. This time, let's factorize x squared minus 25. That is, let's write this as an unsymmetrical rectangle of some kind. Okay, now this one looks tricky because it kind of feels like it's missing a term, but think of it this way. It's really x squared, 1x squared, plus 0x's plus negative 25. So it really is three terms, just I happen to have 0x's. All right, so thinking about that, I'm going to have a rectangle. That's fine. I don't have an x squared piece, and my best guess is it's coming from x times x, the guess. I have one piece that's negative 25, and the rest of it has to add up to zero x's. So just to be very clear, I've got the x squared, bingo. I've got the negative 25, bingo, and this has to add up to zero x's, zero x's. All right, but the question is what numbers do I put here? So let me just write down some general numbers, P and Q. This will be P times X for that area. This will be Q times X for that area. So I need PX plus QX to add up to no X's. So the numbers I need have to have the property that P plus Q is nothing. P plus Q adds up to zero. And P times Q has to be negative 25. All right. So this tells me the numbers basically have to be the same number but differ by sign. And they've got to multiply to be negative 25. 
Well, 25 is a square number, it's 5 times 5. So if I want negative 25, I could do negative 5 times 5 is negative 25. And negative 5 plus 5 is indeed 0. Negative 5 and 5 are looking good. So let's try it. Negative 5 and 5, what will I get? Negative 5x, positive 5x, negative 5x and positive 5x makes no x's, yes. Negative 5 times 5 is negative 25 and all is golden. This is looking really good. So I'd get the answer equals x minus 5 times x plus 5. There's an unsymmetrical rectangle that actually does represent x squared minus 25. Great, we have factored it. We have factorized that particular quadratic. Oh, but here's the thing. People have noticed the fact that 25 is a square number is really, really nice for this. So let me do the problem again. Let me erase all the details, but let me be a little more abstract this time. More abstract. So let's do it with not 25, literally 5 squared. Let's do it, say, minus a squared. Some number a that's been squared. So exactly the same work. Namely, there's an x squared piece coming from x times x. I want area negative a squared over here. I want two numbers that make everything work out beautifully. Two numbers p and q. So that px here and qx here add up to zero x's. Because so I've got the x squared, I've got the negative a squared, I want zero, excuse me, zero x's. All right, so, so that means I want p plus q to be zero, p plus q to be zero as before, and I want p times q to be negative a squared. Well, I can't help but think of negative a and a. Negative a times a is negative a squared, and negative a plus a is zero. Negative a and a do the trick. Uh, a times negative a is negative a squared. Negative ax, positive ax, put them together, would be zero x's. So in general, in general, if I factorize x squared minus a squared, this is x minus a times x plus a. This is a very famous formula in mathematics. It's called the difference of two squares. The difference of two squares formula. Because what have I done? x squared, a square number. Take away difference, a squared, a square number. It's the difference of two squares. Turns out to always factor this way. But it's kind of fun because you know, people forget that algebra is really about arithmetic, so you can actually put in numbers. For example, if I did a difference of two squares, 49 take away 16. This is 7 squared take away 4 squared. So according to the difference of two squares formula, this should be 7 take away 4, 7 take away 4, times 7 plus 4, 7 plus 4. Is that true? What's 3 times 11? It's 33. Is 49 take away 16 33? Why, yes it is. It's speaking truth. So here is a general formula for the difference of two squares. And a lot of people like to have that in their head because it comes up in lots of different places in mathematics. Namely, our opening puzzle. We can use that to solve our opening puzzle. So let's do that next. All right, back to the opening puzzler. Remember, we're looking at Mersenne primes, numbers of the form 2 to the something minus 1 that turn out to be prime. Now, that French monk, Mersenne, managed to prove that 2 to a composite number minus 1 is never prime. So my puzzle was, how do you do it? How would you convince me, say, for example, 2 to the 300th power minus 1 is not prime? Well, this is why people love factoring way back then, because if you got all the algebra of factoring, it actually tells you something about the factors of numbers. People actually love factoring for the sake of number theory because algebra really is about numbers and people forget that. It's about the numbers. Now we just did the difference of two squares formula that something squared take away something squared, the difference of two squares literally does actually factor as x minus a times x plus a. And here's the thing. This formula tells me that this number also factors. Therefore, if it factors, it's not prime. So I have to think of this as a square number, and I have to think of this as a square number, and I can. Because 2 to the 300th is really 2 to the 150th power squared. Minus 1 is a square number. It's 1 squared. So if I just literally copy our algebra formula for these particular numbers, x is 2 to the 150th, a is 1, then I get this as 2 to the 150th take away 1, times 2 to the 150th plus 1, which means this number this number 2 to the 300th power minus 1 factors as the product of two other numbers. 
therefore it's not prime. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to end off there, but I'm also end off with a little extra puzzle for you. Convince me that 2 to the 300th power take away 25 is not prime. It's not prime. I bet you use the difference of two squares, convince me it's not prime. And then when you've done that one, also convince me that 2 to the 300th power minus 26 is not prime. So convince me that's not prime, they convince me that's not prime. And if you want a real challenge, 2 to the 300th power minus 27. Can you figure out a way to convince me that one is also not prime? Whoa, good luck. That's a good juicy question. Have fun with it. Convince me each of those three numbers are not prime.